Hey everyone, this is Victor Campos. In our last video, I showed you how to add a product to your website via the WP eCommerce plugin for WordPress. It was pretty straightforward. So in my fictional company, Victor's Bakery, I've got VMC Pecan Pie. I didn't have to program any of this or do a lot of hard work. I just found the right plugin, installed it, and started to use it. But it's not quite complete yet. For example, it doesn't quite know where our location is and how we want to set up payments and all of that. So that requires more setup of the plugin. I'm going to switch over to the back end. This is the screen that shows the product. It's under the products category. The settings of our e-commerce site are found under the settings menu under the store sub-menu. So I'll go ahead and click there. So that's under settings store. Here then I have a variety of tabs for all aspects of my store. Now that you're an entrepreneur, you've got to manage all of this stuff. So a quick overview, general settings of the store, specific administrative settings, taxes for your products, shipping prices for your products, how are you going to accept payments, how do you, what do you want people to do when they check out, marketing such as cross-promoting of products. If you have a huge inventory that you want to import, instead of adding one by one, you can go to import and presentation, the look and feel of your site. So under general, it's pretty self-explanatory, but taking a quick look, base country, well, my primary location is United States, so I will go ahead and set that USA. Where am I selling to? Uh, one day perhaps selling to the world, but for the moment I'll select none and then only activate USA. Let's see, USA. Keep stock in cart for one day. Makes sense. I don't want people to hold on to a product in their cart very long. You can change that to days, hours, or weeks. Use hierarchical product category list. Default is no, which is fine. If you act ye if you select yes, notice how it will change your addresses. So no is default is fine. What currency are we accepting? Well, uh, I'm in the USA, so I will use the US dollar. Display your dollar sign to the left, as it should be, default, and your thousand decimal separators. Those are fine. Save. OK, admin screen. If you've got a file, if you've got a product that is a downloadable file, you can set how many times can the file be downloaded here, max downloads. Lock downloads to IP address, meaning the person can only download their file from the computer they purchased it from, no other computer. Check MIME types on file uploads, yes, by default, it's a little technical, but leave that alone store admin email what store i mean what email will people contact you at or more importantly what's the email that the plugin will send confirmation to when someone buys a product and such so i'll set that to my school address for the moment set your terms and conditions You can set that up as you wish. What are the terms and conditions of using your site? Customers get a receipt. What is the from address of the receipt? And what is the name that appears on the receipt? So here I'll put VMC Bakery. What did I call my thing anyway? Victor's Bakery. I'll put the same email as before. This is the message that will appear to people. 
it's fine you can change it notice you've got some keywords that can change if it's a product that's being mailed out to people you can set a product uh, tracking email and here's the default and I'll save I'll get to taxes a little later as well as shipping because that's a bit complicated payments we'll get to that later too we'll do checkout here we set up how do we want people to deal with the site when they check out we've got force user registration the default is users can check out without a user account so that's more convenient for people they can just buy your product quickly you can have it set up for them to register first but that also requires for you to turn on membership anyone can register from your WordPress settings under general which would be settings general to make things easier on people I would recommend change shipping same as billing to enable same as billing that way a person can just click a button and it fills in their shipping same as their billing Security and encryption is something that's uh, a, little, a little out of our scope at the moment, but um, this requires setting up an SSL certificate so that um, if you're storing credit card information on your own site, it'll be more secure. We don't need that at this point, and I'll explain why when we set up our payment gateway but if you have purchased SSL certificates for your site you want to turn that on then we have a whole section of how does it look when people are filling in their purchase information we want a um, first name last name address etc and what text do you want to appear so it's easy to change there and then is it displayed is it mandatory etc you can turn that on and off defaults are fine but you can of course tweak them so I'll save under marketing these are pretty self-explanatory also users who bought this also bought you can turn this on and it'll suggest other products if you want people to share your uh, products via social media you can turn on that one you can ask uh, your customers to fill out a simple survey turning that on you can turn on the Facebook like button which is slightly different than than the share this will just give you the single share button right on your site We've got a list for our RSS, which uh, we can skip that for the moment. If you've got Google Merchant Center or Google Product Search, you can use that address. If you have Google Analytics, you can turn on Google Analytics and add your tracking ID. And then Advanced Mode, which is Advanced. Now, I didn't change anything here under uh, Marketing, so I'll just skip that import as I said you can import a list of products make sure you read the details of this section how to import your products and we'll look at some of these other ones on our next video so we're seeing we have a lot of control over our shopping cart plugin and we'll continue to learn what we can do with it in upcoming videos